I'm Andrew Armstrong. I'm a medical oncologist at the Duke Cancer Institute Center for Prostate and Urologic Cancers. I serve as director of research for that center at Duke University. We're in Durham, North Carolina. So I presented an oral abstract on the development and validation of a digital pathology biomarker that can predict the, the need for long-term ADT in men with high-risk localized prostate cancer. For men with high-risk localized prostate cancer, the unmet need are predictive biomarkers that can help guide hormonal therapy. The standard of care, if a man chooses intensity modulated radiotherapy as his primary treatment modality, is to combine that radiation with two to three years of concurrent and adjuvant androgen deprivation therapy. And that's based on clinical trials that were conducted through the NRG, RTOG, as well as in Europe that demonstrated survival benefits from long-term ADT. However, within high-risk prostate cancer, there are known to be different groups. There's favorable high-risk disease, there are patients with node positive disease. There's patients that have multiple high risk features, but current clinical and even genomic uh, tests are not able to properly distinguish those patients that have excellent prognostic uh, outcomes and low risks of distant metastases uh, with short term ADT. And so we thought that artificial intel intelligence applied to digital pathology in the context of randomized phase three studies might be able to teach us something and that we could develop a predictive biomarker, not just a prognostic biomarker, but a predictive biomarker. And that's that's exactly what we did using um, six NRG RTOG phase three studies to develop uh, the image features that go into the biomarker. Uh, over 2,600 patients for the development of the biomarker. And then we locked in this pathology biomarker that used both clinical and digital pathology features. And we validated that externally in the RTOG 9202 trial involving 1,192 patients. A common question is, well, what is it seeing? You know, what is it seeing beyond the reach of the human being uh, that is able to predict such great outcomes or differential outcomes in patients? And the the honest answer to that is, you know, it is seeing many, many things, you know, and it sees it in such a complex way that current understanding of what it's seeing to predict is not known. And a lot of work is going into understanding those features, like on a heat map, that are driving the model and those features that are not important to the model. We're still at the beginning of trying to understand this. What we do know is that about 40% of the model is driven by the pathologic features. About 60% of the model is driven by clinical features. So age, PSA levels, T stage, the Gleason score. So if you add the Gleason score to the digital pathology, more than half, about 60% of the model is pathology based. But we showed in our study that the clinical features alone are not predictive. So that 40 to 60% of the model that is digital pathology based is really what's driving the predictive utility. We could speculate about what the, the digital pathology is seeing, but right now we, we don't have clear insights. It would take quite a lot of work to figure out what the model is actually seeing, whether it's recognizing different phenotypes of the cancer cell in terms of the morphology, the tumor microenvironment, the immune infiltration, the architecture of the glands, all of these features are part of the model, but which of those features are actually driving the predictive utility is not clear. And what, what would be very nice to have is an overlap with genomic features, with uh, a clear human look at those digital pathology features that are overrepresented in that heat map. But at this point, we know that the model works. We showed that the model has predictive utility, meaning that it was able to distinguish outcomes um, in those patients that tested positive for the AI biomarker. The patients who tested positive for the AI biomarker had a significant reduction in distant metastases with long-term ADT over short-term ADT in the RTOG 9202 trial. Patients who tested negative for the AI bi biomarker had no benefits in 
um, reducing distant metastases over the 10 to 15 years of follow up in that trial. And we had a significant p value for interaction of 0 0.04, suggesting that um, the biomarker is predictive. It is prognostic also, but more importantly, it can help guide therapy. And the implications of the, the biomarker are that about a third of our patients that were high risk were AI biomarker negative and could thus be spared long-term ADT because they have excellent outcomes with short-term ADT that is not improved upon by long-term ADT. A surprising finding was that intermediate risk patients that were in the RTOG 9202 study um, about 40% of those patients were actually AI biomarker positive, meaning the AI saw higher risk features than our clinicians and pathologists would have recognized. And these patients may benefit from long-term ADT because they had a reduction in the risk of distant metastases, which was much higher in the AI bot positive group that were intermediate risk. And so AI can teach us quite a lot. It can uh, teach us about which patients may be spared a long-term toxicity. It can also teach us about which patients uh, may have their lives saved um, because it's more able to identify a predictive test and a, a feature that the clinical pathologists are not able to identify. Thank you. It sounds very powerful, uh, this AI biomarker prediction. Um, you probably already answered the next question. Next question uh, is what are the main outcomes of the study? Sure. So um, the, the main outcomes, like I said, were to demonstrate predictive utility. And by developing and then validating in a very large phase three study, we we're able to show for a primary endpoint a reduction in distant metastases only in the AI positive group with no benefits in the AI negative group. Our secondary endpoint was death with distant metastases. Let me speak for a second about why we pick these endpoints. It, even in men with high risk prostate cancer, the vast majority of patients actually die of other causes, um, heart disease, neurologic disease, stroke, dementia. About 60% of our patients actually in this study died of other causes, and we did not think that a digital pathology AI biomarker would be able to predict overall survival, given that most of the causes of death are not due to prostate cancer. So we focused on mortality related to metastatic prostate cancer and metastatic prostate cancer itself and the, the risk of those events long term, because that's what's driving treatment and mortality from this disease. Um, an interesting question that we could answer in the future is, could the uh, digital pathology actually be able to predict other cause mortality? There's a lot of features in the digital pathology, such as inflammation, blood vessel size, that might be able to get some window into the health of um, our patients beyond just their prostate cancer. But we focused this presentation on prostate cancer specific uh, outcomes, and we were clearly able to show um, that the AI biomarker was able to distinguish outcomes um, uh, for these endpoints. And so, like I said, about a third of the high-risk patients could be spared long-term ADT uh, because they had excellent uh, outcomes with no benefits um, uh, with the uh, long-term ADT because they tested AI negative. Thank you. So last question, from now on, would you use this biomarker to decide on the duration of ATD for patients treated with AD, ADT plus radiotherapy for long risk, uh, for high risk localized prostate cancer? Right, so the next steps are to make this more widely available. And Artera AI is the company that we worked with along with the NRG, uh, RTOG cooperative group to make this a reality. Our Terra AI has developed an intermediate risk biomarker, which they're starting to commercialize now that can identify intermediate risk patients that can be spared ADT. And uh, Dr. Spratt and, and myself and many other colleagues have a publication that's coming out imminently in the New England Journal of Medicine Evidence uh, showing that this is a predictive biomarker. 
the data that I presented at ASCO, we're also working on publicating that publishing this. And this is a distinct biomarker from the intermediate risk biomarker. This is a high risk long term ADT predictive biomarker. So I could imagine a future where digital pathology becomes the standard of care and that digital pathology is used to incorporate an AI biomarker that can then help intermediate risk patients decide whether they need ADT at all and high risk patients decide on the duration of their ADT, either six months or two to three years. And that would be very helpful for patients. It gives patients a much more personalized treatment approach rather than the more broad um, decision based on clinical factors, which are not predictive. The, the main outcomes, like I said, were to demonstrate predictive utility. And by developing and then validating in a very large phase three study, we're able to show for a primary endpoint, a reduction in distant metastases only in the AI positive group with no benefits in the AI negative group. Our secondary endpoint was death with distant metastases. Let me speak for a second about why we pick these endpoints. It, even in men with high risk prostate cancer, the vast majority of patients actually die of other causes, um, heart disease, neurologic disease, stroke, dementia. About 60% of our patients actually in this study died of other causes. And we did not think that a digital pathology AI biomarker would be able to predict overall survival, given that most of the causes of death are not due to prostate cancer. So we focused on mortality related to metastatic prostate cancer and metastatic prostate cancer itself and the, the risk of those events long-term, because that's what's driving treatment and mortality from this disease. Um, an interesting question that we could answer in the future is, could the uh, digital pathology actually be able to predict other cause mortality? There's a lot of features in the digital pathology, such as inflammation, blood vessel size, that might be able to get some window into the health of um, our patients beyond just their prostate cancer. But we focused this presentation on prostate cancer specific uh, outcomes, and we were clearly able to show um, that the AI biomarker was able to distinguish outcomes um, uh, for these endpoints. And so, like I said, about a third of the high-risk patients could be spared long-term ADT uh, because they had excellent uh, outcomes with no benefits um, uh, with the uh, long-term ADT because they tested AI negative. Thank you. So last question, from now on, would you use this biomarker to decide on the duration of ATD for patients treated with AD, ADT plus radiotherapy for long risk, uh, for high risk or localized prostate cancer? Right, so the next steps are to make this more widely available. And Artera AI is the company that we worked with along with the NRG, uh, RTOG cooperative group to make this a reality. Artera AI has developed an intermediate risk biomarker, which they're starting to commercialize now that can identify intermediate risk patients that can be spared ADT. And uh, Dr. Spratt and, and myself and many other colleagues have a publication that's coming out imminently in the New England Journal of Medicine evidence uh, showing that this is a predictive biomarker. The data that I presented at ASCO, we're also working on publicating that, publishing this, and this is a distinct biomarker from the intermediate risk biomarker. This is a high risk, long-term ADT predictive biomarker. So I could imagine a future where digital pathology becomes the standard of care, and that digital pathology is used to incorporate an AI biomarker that can then help intermediate risk patients decide whether they need ADT at all, and high risk patients decide on the duration of their ADT, either six months or two to three years. And that would be very helpful for patients. It gives patients a much more personalized treatment approach rather than the more broad um, decision based on clinical factors, which are not predictive. Right, so the next steps are to make this more widely available. And Artera AI is the company that we worked with along with the NRG 
uh, RTOG cooperative group to make this a reality. Our Terra AI has developed an intermediate risk biomarker, which they're starting to commercialize now that can identify intermediate risk patients that can be spared ADT. And uh, Dr. Spratt and, and myself and many other colleagues have a publication that's coming out imminently in the New England Journal of Medicine Evidence uh, showing that this is a predictive biomarker. The data that I presented at ASCO, we're also working on publicating that publishing this, and this is a distinct biomarker from the intermediate risk biomarker. This is a high risk, long-term ADT predictive biomarker. So I could imagine a future where digital pathology becomes the standard of care, and that digital pathology is used to incorporate an AI biomarker that can then help intermediate risk patients decide whether they need ADT at all, and high risk patients decide on the duration of their ADT, either six months or two to three years. And that would be very helpful for patients. It gives patients a much more personalized treatment approach rather than the more broad um, decision based on clinical factors, which are not predictive.